So I've finally gotten the Renewal Grabs Exotic from the Legendary Loft Sector, and if you haven't gotten it already, go and get it now as this is one of the best Exotics to use in PvE and PvP. It not only enhances your Dust Roll Grenade's radius, but it also reduces incoming damage for anyone within it, and also reduces anyone within the grenade damage to be lower. I've seen the videos, the talks, and everything, and didn't expect it to be this amazing, but dear god I was so wrong. This is going to get nerfed in PvP at some point, and it may affect PvE in some way as well. But before that happens, you want to try this build out first and foremost, as it has a great potential for endgame and grandmaster content. Now if you don't want to see this content nerfed anytime soon, then why not leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notification for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using the Revenant, and from here, the aspects and fragments used will be more or less focused on increased survivability and reduced ability cooldown. You will need to have Dust Roll Grenades as they have the fastest cooldown provided, but also because the exotics wouldn't work otherwise. From here, you then want to have both the Touch of Winter aspect, which will give you an increased radius on Dust Roll Grenades, and a Stasis Crystal the moment it's formed. And then you want to have the Grim Harvest aspect as you want to collect as many status shards as possible for both regenerating your mini regeneration and abilities overall via elemental shard. Next you'll want Whispers of Durance for increased slow and freeze timer on combatants. Whispers of Shard which will allow us to destroy status crystals for a quick regen charge rate. Whisper of Rending for increased kinetic damage against frozen combatants. Whispers of Conduction for making status shards track to you when nearby and then Whispers of Rhyme, which will grant you an overshield upon shards collected. The plan of action here is to use Renewal Grass as much as we can against combatants and ourselves, and gain the benefits of successfully pulling it off. We will be getting overshields, a 42.5% kinetic damage increase against frozen combatants, 50% damage reduction while within our dust fields, and near instant grenade regen for you to do this multiple times over. This is all achieved by just the aspects and fragments alone, However, if you want to add on mods and stats as well, then the build can become even more better suited for all environments. For stats wise, we have Discipline at 100 with Intellect, Recovery and Strength at around 60 as well. No need to invest in Mobility as that's not needed so much here. Next we have Font of Wisdom for a plus 50 Intellect cooldown, Oda Tenacity for an extra 50% damage reduction via Void Wells, Elemental Shards which will convert Stasis Shards into Wells, Radiant Light for the plus 20 in Strength, and a Reaping Wild Maker, which will allow us to create a Void Well the moment we dodge and get a kill. As shown, we are focusing on the best of the best as we want to make sure that we not only cover our allies with our stasis abilities, but also have the capabilities of doing this as many times as we like without fearing of death catching up to us. As long as you are able to create a stasis crystal, then everything else will fall in place, and that's all that matters with the build, as your grenades will be supporting you through and through. You then want to focus on the following weapons as shown. The Crate AR is a fantastic AR that everyone and their mothers should try and get as soon as possible. I was lucky to get the Substance and the Headstone perk roll, as this is perfect for any stasis builds you have in mind. What I really like about the weapon is that when you have both Substance and the Weapon's Origin trait kick in, it will automatically feel like you're firing over 100 plus rounds instead of this standard 60. This is great against Minor and Majors, as no need to worry about reloading so much, and although it does feel a bit weak, this should not be a reason for you to reject not using it at all. In secondary wise, we have the Insidious Pulse with Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie, two perks I've been trying to get as part of my collection for a good while. If you ever plan to do the raid, then try and keep a lookout for this ROM as will help with grenade focus builds in mind. But not only that, there's a lot of arc based combatants for the season, so this will be a great weapon to use for quickly destroying their shields. I've also noticed that the weapon can get raw ball as well, which will make it even better for Grandmaster when you can't effectively damage a mini boss or boss with your primary or no ammo heavy. The downside to this though is that you need to farm for one, and if you've never done the raid, then this will be an issue. Alternatively, the under your skin bow with adaptive munition could be a good replacement, as you can use this bow for effectively long distance and also use the perk which will allow you to easily take out match game shields without the need of other elemental weapons of choice. For heavy, we have the Deathbringer rocket launcher, which although it's not stasis focus, is great at boss DPS and great for clearing out rooms via its AoE effect. I highly recommend you try and get this as some of the new nightfalls are chaotic with the amount of combatants available in a room. 
Although Galahorn or the Palomaya B rocket launcher is also a good choice if nothing else is around. For your stats, both the Discipline and Strength stat will be the two key areas for building up enough ability energy to proc the many buffs you'll be reliant on. Similar to how we did the AoE's Hunter build last season, we won't be focusing so much support around the melee this time round. As mentioned, Discipline stat at 90 to 100 is going to be the best option you want to aim for if you want to have a relatively fast regeneration on top of the other mods you'll be relying on. The Elemental Shards mod can help create shards via your shurikens or grenades and from this you can collect them to further build on your abilities and never run out unless in dire straits. As the base exotics and grenades are pretty powerful hand in hand, just having your grenades at 100 would be considered enough as it's all relatively fast to begin with. We can also add in distribution, bomber or absolution to the mix, but this is only if you can't reach 100 and you're happy to sacrifice some of your other mods in the mean run. From here you can then focus on intellect stat which is at 60, but being supported by the frontal wisdom mod for the super regen over time, and the harmonic cypher mod for creating orbs of power via your primary stasis weapon. The hunter's super is incredibly powerful while clearing up the arena you're in, and can easily do damage over time against bosses to mini bosses alike. Having this one area boosted via the mod is the best way to improve its effectiveness for each area you're in. It's also really great when you add in the power preservation mod as you can produce more orbs for your allies, which can be chained for allowing you to use your super back to back with your friends. This is all you will need to focus on for becoming the best of the best and most relied upon hunter for end game, as mobility as mentioned isn't that much needed here, and your recovery and resilience should be at a good level to start with. At leftover wise, we have the Weller Tenacity mod for 50% damage reduction for a few seconds. Radiant Light for a plus 20 in strength, Invigoration for melee cooldown upon orbs of power collected, Rocket Launcher Scavenger for increased bonus reserves, Reaping Well Makeup for allowing us to create void wells upon dodging and getting a kill, Utility Finisher for allowing us to get class energy back via finishers, and Lucan Finisher which allows us to produce a heavy armor brick from finishing a Lucan Hive or Champion. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mod we are using and how they play within the build. For Head, we have Minor Discipline, Power Preservation, Harmonic Siphon, and Frontal Wisdom mod. Arm, we have Discipline and Weller Tenacity mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Damner, Thermal Shock Plating, and Elemental Shards mod. Leg, we have Recovery, Rocket Scavenger, Invigoration, and Radiant Light mod. Cloak, we have Minor Discipline, Lucan Finisher, Utility Finisher, and Reaping Wallmaker mod. Now as we have covered everything within the build, I would like to say that this build can be used for whatever content you have in mind, and I mean anything, with little change involved. It's been running rampant in PvP, and though it's not as bad, it's very hard to counter when half of the team is using it. What makes the build worth using them is the fact that it allows users to play a huge and pivotal role in Master of the Grandmaster content. Hunters tend to be looked down at times for the Warlocks or Titans, as they provide better protective coverage and support. However, with how Stasis Hunters and now Void Hunters work, they can provide the near same support that other classes provided and not just via going invisible all the time. As shown, each time we throw a Dustful Grenade down on a Battant, we will be reducing their damage and freeze them straight away which we can then use to freeze the more tough Ogre Battants repeatedly and gain more damage over time. When we throw it down on ourselves though, we can get a damage reduction while inside and we can use this to prevent combatants from closing the gap, or use this as an extra layer of protection on top of the other protection available, etc. And don't worry about running out so quickly, simply destroying a glacier is all you need to get a full one back again. And this is why you should be preparing to use such a loadout for Grandmaster, as it combines the already powerful effects of dustful grenades and then adds on an extra level of support that you and your team can use freely. As Protective Light has been nerfed, these exotics have given us an opportunity to play it safe with no cooldown via grenades, and it might not be a lot compared to Bubble Titan or Phoenix Warlock, but it still brings something to the table that is highly not to be slept on. We also have our weapons that can fit into the style we like, fast super over time and easily one of the best mods for the season, the Lucan Finisher mod which everyone will want on day 1. Can this be improved on any further? Well, no not really, but I may look into a version using the Ego Acceptor as that could make it even more powerful as a setup in general. Now just be aware that the exotics may get nerfed at some point and hopefully not by a lot, but before that happens do give this build a try as it won't let you down at all. 
So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub. And also follow me on Twitter, keep up to date, if you want more general Destiny news and builds. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.